Okay, so this is going to be my first interview in the channel. I'm taking uh, the opportunity here. I'm currently in uh, Oslo, Norway for Hakon. I'm here with my coworker, Otvar Vontmo. And Hi there. Hey, what better opportunity to talk with him since we live so far. And at the same time, I went like, hey, let's record an, an interview here. So Otvar, well, yeah. <laughs> thank you for giving me the chance. So. You're mostly known in the industry as an uh, MVP in the IT side and also in the security side about lull bins. Yeah, that's uh, my tradecraft. That's your tradecraft. <laughs> that, that, that's your branding. That's my branding in, in, yeah, in the industry. That's correct. So talk, 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 talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so the LOL bins just became something out of, out of my pure interest in digging into stuff. Mm -hmm. So it actually started with me trying to document all the knowledge we already knew about these binaries mm -hmm. because every now and then when people tweeted something out, it got lost and nobody noted it down anywhere. So mm. to me, it started as a project to document stuff so I could keep it for, for later use. Mm -hmm. uh, and after I did that for a little while and I tweeted it out, it became a great interest for very many people. So in fact, that's kind of like the industry in general. We, we tweet stuff out, then it disappears. <laughs> it goes out in the ether. We, um, it ends up in multiple blog posts. People talk about new exploitation techniques. Yeah. Uh, I can do this with Cobalt Strike. I can do this with C Sharp, PowerShell. We have this stuff in our Python. And it gets kind of lost. Um, not lost. Because at least some of the tweets, people can recover them. Yeah. Um, there are other people in Twitter that simply, uh, from time to time, just clean out their entire Twitter and that information that's yeah. lost. But mostly blog posts, but there's no co single collection for a lot of stuff. And it's kind of good that you're doing this and you're collecting all of that information. Um, you initially started with GitHub, right? Yeah, so it started as uh, basically just GitHub, pay uh, sorry, uh, GitHub repo, where I just created MD files mm -hmm. and linked them together just as a HTML simple page, like really okay. doing a simple stuff. And uh, after I did that, uh, there came another project along called the GTFO bins, mm -hmm. which is basically the equivalent just by using Linux binaries instead. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a really cool uh, portal, a web portal that you can use to search in. Uh -huh. So we decided that we would do the same. Uh, and in that process, we did a lot of changes with the project. We instead of like having MD files, we started mm -hmm. converting everything into YAML files instead. Okay. So we can use that that as a base uh, for documentation. So you can reuse it in other projects as well. Okay. Yeah, because normally when you set up stuff in um, in Markdown files. Yeah, Markdown files. Uh, right. You can't limit it where you can actually see it. You can probably see it in in GitHub, GitLab or some editor in your Mac or some editor in somewhere else. But by YAML, you mean that I can actually just write SPS code or JavaScript or wherever I consume. And why not JSON for it? So uh, I think we, we tried JSON, but mm -hmm. somehow we ended up in YAML because it has more, uh, we felt it was easier to write mm -hmm. and it had more possibilities in, in terms of um, commenting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was probably one of the main reasons. Okay. And also I, we kind of felt that GitHub was more YAML friendly than JSON friendly. Oh, uh, in terms That's of if if you rename them to uh, YAML files, it will actually create these boxes where it uh -huh. shows the data in a different way. Oh, nice! So to us, it was like kind of a natural way of go. And and right now, um, most of the information has been you. So are you opening also for pull requests, or are yeah, there sure. multiple? Committers. So uh, anyone can uh, actually create a pull request. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now it's me and um, let's see, we are five others. So we 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 are a group that discuss if it's a valid LOL bin or not. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning we didn't have any rules on what was a valid LOL bin, mm -hmm. but now we have like a strict like set of rules, <laughs> uh, and we have changed focus on like. In the beginning, it was everything that could spawn a process, basically. Mm -hmm. But now it's more like red team focused. Uh, it needs to be like reconning, like, uh, yeah. getting additional information, and code execution, code execution. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, but yeah, uh, it's a never-ending project, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, especially when the Windows, Windows, 
big. Yeah, and there's suddenly there's a new thing discovered somewhere, and yeah. and also you guys are covering uh, binaries in other products, or they have to be in the OS. Oh, so uh, initially we had for everything in Windows. Uh, if okay. you installed a driver and it had a binary, we would do that as well. Okay. Uh, we changed that because it became too much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I do keep a little <laughs> private side note on different <laughs> binaries, uh, but it's nothing I'm I am oh. sharing publicly. And and have you thought of expanding it to other things outside of LOL bins, like other projects or side projects along the same lines? Now that you have that experience with LOL bins, uh, I might in the future. Uh, but uh, I was kind of hoping that the community would like do it by themselves, okay. since we now have one for Windows binaries and we have one for Linux binaries. Okay. So I was hoping that someone would like take, take the, the third th party, th take the torch, and go like, "We're yeah. going to do it now for we're going to do it for <laughs> third party binaries." <laughs> and, and how has been the reaction in the community? How, has the community really uh, come together and started doing pull requests, or at least sending you stuff over? Yeah, sure. So I, I got a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm the kind of guy that I, I think it's hard to <laughs> reject stuff <laughs> when people use their time yep. and effort to contribute. I, I really wanted to like cool. acknowledge that. Um, but there was a time where I think it went a little overboard. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you could pop a calc with whatever, it was like, oh, it's a LOL bin. But uh, really it wasn't in our opinion because it didn't actually <laughs> execute code. It just spawned a process. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That's good to, that's good to know. Hmm. So we're here at HackOn. Yeah. HackOn is uh, a conference that I've never heard before until uh, you and the organizers who held actually contacted me. So can you tell tell us a bit more about HackOn and your involvement in it? I, you've been part of this conference now since the beginning, right? No. Uh, so I've actually just joined up here for, I think it was three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've done basically sessions uh, mm -hmm. and helped up with uh, they have something called a pre-hackon where they do training such as mm -hmm. you did this time yep. with PowerShell um, so uh, yeah during this three years I got more and more involved so uh, now I'm actually helping out creating questions they mm -hmm. have this competition each year where they nominate uh, the where master you can, security yeah master of cyber security master of master in so Norway yeah. so I was uh, yeah. You guys were doing the questions, and they were in Norwegian. Yeah. And I was reading in to some of those, and some of some of them I knew. Like, what is this? What is its purpose? Read the answers. Okay, it's this one. And then <laughs> everybody voted for e e everything else. I was like, ah, oh, but I got it right. Yeah. And then there were others where I was going like, I have no clue what it says. <laughs> That's the problem with Norwegian, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so so it's a it's a competition for Norwegians, mm -hmm. but, uh, as you as you saw. Um, and the winner gets a prize, a money prize, and mm -hmm. gets to gets the honor of having the title for that year. So 2019 is... And it's kind of good because I saw that most of the people that had participated were young people. Yeah. I saw that um, there were two ladies, uh, one, two, three, like four uh, guys that I think are college age. Yeah. And others are more like young. me uh, that are in the... Um, Later on in the years, and, pro and professional workers, and it's kind of good because it's. It, 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 I liked it because not only did it motivate different age enders, uh, age groups, it also motivated multiple genders. Yeah, I saw that there was a, a high female count of participants. I think also there were the three cards. girls this year. Yeah, uh, in the top ten. Yep. So that's uh, amazing. So that's cool. Yeah, um, it's on the list. Them competing from the app and yeah. everything on stage. So, so the competition is like uh, it starts in October, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and then they do a round of uh, a quiz mm -hmm. online, uh, and you can try it as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. So it's twenty five questions, and then later on in December there's a round two with mm -hmm. additional twenty five questions, and in uh, now in January there's a round three, and if you are correct on every uh, mm -hmm. every round. You're allowed to participate in the uh, finals here in uh, at Hackon, okay. um, and they select the top ten. Yeah, and and now the com the purpose of the conference is that conference happens. You bring people from the outside and also people for, uh, local here yeah. from Norway. And what's the main purpose of Hackon? It's not a commercial uh, no. conference. So it's it's by the community uh, f uh, for the community basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, um, all the um, profit from the conference goes to charity. 
Yeah, so this year it went to um, to women in uh, Congo uh, that has been abused and raped and stuff. Yes. So so they got a lot of money this year. Yeah, in fact, that's uh, I remember I was talking with my wife when you guys called and we're like, eh, there's this conference in Norway that's going to take me almost 24 hours just to get there yeah. from one day to the other. <laughs> that's a lot of flight and, and, yeah, and she was going like, oh, I don't know. And, and as soon as I told her, well, it's a charitable event. Yeah. We're going to help women in Africa that have been abandoned by their families, that have been raped, and all this stuff. And my wife being very Christian, she went like, okay, you're on that plane. Yeah. I'm like, but honey, but it's a long flight, I don't know, I'm not sure. And she's going like, no, 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 you're going. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's how I find myself over here in Norway. Yeah, I, and I, I appreciate it coming over, man. Oh, yeah. I, I have to say, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. I like that... Uh, Norwegians understood my sense of humor yeah. during training. You have a dark sense of humor. <laughs> dark sense of humor. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, but, and then when I did my presentation on stage, I talk about Sisma operating offensively against Sisman, and uh, students came to me after the set, uh, after my presentation. That was not the real Carlos. <laughs> we were hoping for jokes and uh, non political correct stuff, and what happened? And go like, well, well. I, I, I know I couldn't read the crowd. You guys, I, I, I spent two days with you guys teaching. And at the beginning, it was like this, but then by the second day, I was throwing all kinds of jokes because I already read you guys and we, we had that trust level. But but yeah, it was it, it was fun. I, I'm I'm happy that you guys invited me. I'm yeah. happy that I got the chance to do training and also to do a presentation. Um, the class was awesome. I uh, the student the students were great. Um, I agreed. Yeah, at the beginning, they were a bit shy. They wouldn't ask questions. They were serious. And then by midday, I finally won them over. I was getting a ton of questions. Um, I was surprised demo gods treated me. Yeah, like everything was They've never straight. treated me before, ever. Demo gods typically <laughs> uh, bit the crap out of me. And, um, and this uh, was the first time that I actually deployed the entire labs into Azure for your students. I worked really and, well. Yeah, it worked really well. They liked it. They did uh, partial remoting. We did WMI. We did a bit of Active Directory. They mastered the fundamentals of uh, PowerShell. They have been some great presentations here that I like. I am in the speaker room while talking with um, people from CyberArk, uh, people that came from Spain, from Telco. Uh, SpectreOps guy as well. SpectreOps guys, uh, Rohan, Captain Jesus. Andy, who's also known as Waldo, they did the presentation on Bloodhound. Yeah. Um, I, Rohan, Rohan was the one that surprised me the most. I've been friends with Andy for a long time. Yeah. And Rohan, every time I met him, is so quiet, so serious, so shy. So shy. Yeah. And then I got to meet the real Rohan, <laughs> so, which is awesome. Um, so, yeah, I have to say I really, really enjoyed my time here at HackOn. Yeah. And I would say anybody that wants to come here, they should. It is a really good conference. I really liked it. Um, and I, uh, I hope to come here next year if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Hope we'll make that happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I want to keep the video short. I hope that you guys like this short interview. And uh, remember, uh, click subscribe and also click thumbs up if you like the video. If you didn't <laughs> like it, click thumbs down and uh, remember to always leave a comment. Yeah. Thank you. Uh,